Insiders, Harrison and Watley here again for another edition of the Price List Update Summary Videos. This is the fifth video in our Plus series, and we are here to discuss the May 2020 price list. Uh, in April, we discussed there was about 26 new line items, and continuing on in that trend, in May, we have a total of 18 new line items, uh, some potentially COVID-related, some claim-related in general. So as always in this video series, our goal is to analyze the new Xactimate line items that were added to the price list, discuss why they were added and how to use them, as well as look at some of the changes to yields or text descriptions, additional item information, uh, to understand kind of why these things are happening and how they affect uh, those writing sheets with Xactimate. Uh, so without further ado, uh, I'm going to pull up, you'll see here on my left side, I've got Xactimate 28 with a May price list for San Diego. On the right side, I have the eService Center link available uh, for, uh, from Xactimate of their text changes that they put out. And I have prepared some of these new line items. So let's, let's start at the top here, Wadley. We've got some new line items in the HMR and TCR category here for disinfecting buildings with fog slash uh, spray per square footage and even after hours. Uh, what do you think, uh, you know, I've also brought in here for some purpose and context, the existing line item before was a CLN DODR for deodorized building hot thermal fog. So what do you think was the inspiration behind adding these HMR, TCR, disinfect building line items? I don't think that it's a big leap to assume that this has everything to do with COVID-19. I'm not even running a full service you know, shop anymore, but even our contents company, uh, you know, in part and partial because of my GC license I have on it, we've been called in to do some of this disinfecting and fogging it's been interesting and it gets back to the good old like do contractors really know and think about what their pricing is uh, for performing activities or do they just depend on Xactimate to provide uh, those guidelines and I think this is a great example of where the pricing department provides some navigational beacons so to, we have some idea of well, you know what one would charge if you're going to do ahead and do disinfecting um, by square footage and square footage is how the facilities managers and property managers are asking this to be bid and performed. So I think that was a clever way to really accommodate what the marketplace is asking for. And we're, I'm alluding to the Delta, the line item that you have down there below the CLN DOD R this was done on a volume basis. And this is kind of born out of the whole mold is gold early 2000s thing. Everybody was doing it based on volume. But for a number of reasons I don't get into, uh, the square footage makes a heck of a lot more sense in a COVID environment. So I like that move, it makes it a lot simpler. You know, one might look at that pricing and be like, oh my God, it's astronomically more, right? And I'm so sure that somebody's gonna do that in some estimating department. Look boss, look, look, it's like 10 times as much, right? It's 20 times as much. Not recognizing that it's done by foot uh, as opposed to volume. Uh, but still, if you were to do the math on it, um, it, it's still more attractive, you know, than the hot thermal fog. See, the hot thermal fog, Harrison, that was always like a passive thing. Like you could set it, you could set a fogger in a room, set it, forget it, like you were Ron Papil or something. Um, but this, when you're disinfecting in a COVID, that's like active, right? You're going around to each and every area, right? So they're trying to contemplate the additional cost. Uh, associated with the, the labor yields that would be required to perform such a function. So good additions. I like it. I like that uh, in HMR and TCR, it reminds me of a conversation you and I had last month about, you know, all right, COVID-19, what line item should really apply in most cases, maybe in repair, do you do WTR, do you do HMR, do you do uh, TCR? And I biased, but barely uh, HMR. Um, Look, the pricing department, if you're just to infer what message they're sending, this line item was clearly, these line items were adopted because of COVID and there is no WTR line item. Thus, you could, you could reasonably infer that HMR is the biased category code for uh, the pricing department. And so last month it didn't matter with, because- With, with COVID related- activities. COVID related, yeah. Last month it was PPEs, right? So there's no labor, materials only, didn't matter. Uh, wouldn't affect the cost outside of automatically trade or, uh, triggered labor minimums, which you and I aren't a fan of for that reason. Uh, but in this particular case, it does matter very much because the labor rates are different. Um, so 
uh, it's interesting to see that HMR is really going to emerge as the predominant uh, category code for COVID related activities. So here it is. Now we got it. Here it is. Uh, let's jump to the next section. So last month in April, we had some of these, uh, 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 we, we discussed some of these HEPA F line items in general, uh, and uh, mostly in the yield change category. What I want to show here is that they have new line items for HEPA vacuuming, exposed framing with sheathing specifically. Uh, we did not have this in the past. So I'm going to bring actually up the April one that we talked about. This is the same line item or uh, similar. No, this is SH line items because these new line items are new. So these ones have the old ones. HMR, yeah. H-E-P-A-F has been clarified in May to be for exposed framing with no sheathing. Now, new line items were added in May. HEPA FSH, note the additional S here in all these line items. Uh, that this is specifically for HEPA vacuuming exposed framing with sheathing. So obviously there was some kind of mix up or confusion as to what line item to use when HEPA vacuuming exposed framing with no sheathing versus exposed framing with sheathing. And as a result, we have new line items for specifically exposed framing with sheathing involved. Thoughts? Uh, great addition really solves a lot of impasses and arguments that it may emerge in a claims environment. So thumbs up on the sheathing addition. Uh, you mentioned like the old line items, like <laughs> dude, those line items actually aren't that old for the exposed framing uh, themselves for HEPA vacuuming, right? Yeah, they, I mean, I, they, they were yield those. adjustments last month, not new, but yield adjustments. Yeah, you got it. So it's good to see that there's, those are settling because the pricing seems to be going up and down and up and down pretty fantastically. So they must be getting feedback from uh, the field. You know, sometimes they commission these huge exercises where they'll audit, you know, a hundred roofers at a time uh, to examine yield rate, uh, yield rates and so on. So um, I have a feeling that they're doing some heavy lifting because I, I mean, we're seeing the price kind of go all over the place as it settles here for these line items. I like sheathing. It also harkens back to a conversation you and I had last month about the line items the new line items for soda blasting and for dry right. ice blasting, right? And so they still have this old CLN line items. It's ambiguous how those are supposed to be applied, but the dry ice, the new ones for dry ice and for soda blasting, it's for exposed framing similarly. And I was mentioning, what do you do when you run into a shear wall, right? And so the way to resolve this is the same way. They should just add sheathing as they did here for soda blasting and for uh, the dry ice, and then they're good to go. And then you, you could actually eliminate the CLN line items altogether, because I think the existence of those former legacy six line items with the addition of the new line item, uh, nine line items is, is although a step in the right direction, there's going to be a lot of confusion that emerges around that once you get outside of uh, exposed framing, because sometimes there, there's plenty of scenarios where you're doing dry ice blasting and you're doing, say, a uh, ceiling joist but on the first floor, and then your, your uh, dry ice blasting also the sheathing, that's the, really the flooring for the level two, right? And so I would not know how to estimate that with the addition of those new line items last month. I don't know how to wed those CLN line items. What are you gonna do? Take the CLN line items and update the trade code uh, to you know, HMR, but then you would increase the yield to contemplate the additional efficiencies and thus reducing the price. Yeah, it gets messy. So uh, anyhow, make a note for our next calibration meeting. We'll float that with the boys, see what they think. About I will. It. This is actually a great opportunity for those of you watching that don't know. Uh, we do meet with the exact word pricing department on a regular basis and try to talk about omissions from the price list, things that are being done in the field that don't have a line item that make it tough to settle a claim. So we have a line item request form uh, that we'll show here. And please, Go ahead to our website, getinsights.org, and let us know what additions you would like to see to the Xactimate price list so we can provide some of that feedback to Xactiware on behalf of Actionable Insights. Excellent point. Let's jump down to the next one. Asbestos test fees. There was four line items added here, two in the fee category, two in the HMR category for post-abatement clearance, base fees, and per samples. Uh, thoughts? What do you think about these new line items? You know, first off, one thing that's always been a bit of a bummer is that you know the environmental companies that I've trained and otherwise work with and know um, we even have a board member who owns a, an environmental company 
they don't bill an exact. I don't know anybody that bills an exact that does environmental work. And I think this is a, broadly a step in the right direction for the pricing department because they're trying to pay more attention for how things are actually billed uh, in the field for when we're doing environmental work. I actually don't know much, that much about the cost structure and how things are broken out. So I don't want to like uh, weigh in on it acutely, but I think broadly, uh, it's great that they're attempting to tackle this because I think it would be much better for the health of that ecosystem and pricing if Exact can provide some uh, navigational beacons, right? Not, not to claim that it's the right price, but right now the way that it was done and the way that it's really built in reality versus how the pricing apartments uh, existing legacy line items have existed, they haven't reconciled at all. And so people have just not used it. Uh, it seems like this reconciles with some of the invoicing that I've seen come through with environmental companies. And I'm interested to see if it'll be adopted. One thing I want to add to that, to those points, you'll note here that the pricing for these new asbestos test fee post abatements ends with a dot zero zero, 375 even, 75 even. Note it's the San Diego price list. Mm -hmm. When you see a dot zero zero on a line item, especially a new line item, uh, that should be an indicator that Xactimate is trying to determine you know, the pricing department is trying to determine where will that line item end up pricing wise. And what they're really hoping for is feedback on the pricing of these dot zero zero line items uh, up or down to help them understand you know, what is the actual cost in this area for this particular fee. So whenever you see that dot zero zero, it's just an indicator that the pricing for that line item has not exactly settled. Uh, and there may be some adjustments in the future to better reflect what's happening in reality in the various regions that they provide prices for. Um, I'm going to read through the lines, guys. Top-down feedback. If you're an environmental contractor uh, and that pricing does not work for you, now is a good time to send an email to pricing at exactware.com and uh, thoughtfully justify your position as to why those fee structures are insufficient in your area. So I'm going to jump here to the DOP inspection. We've got DOP test inspection per piece of uh, equipment. Uh, and this is specifically for those that are unfamiliar, DOP tests are dispersed oil particulate tests. Uh, Watley, what are your thoughts on these new DOP inspection line items? Conjecture here, buddy. I'm not sure exactly what's going on, but I think it might have something to do with these IHs that are working in hospitals, these industrial hygienists. They're putting together protocols as it relates to COVID-19. Uh, you know, I can imagine this in like a... Um, you know, an elderly care facility, so on. So they want to check uh, the efficiencies associated with their HVAC uh, equipment. Yep. And so they're likely calling for these, but I am not sure. So I, I would love uh, some folks to weigh in. Tell me I am wrong. Uh, tell me where this is actually coming from. How are you guys applying it? Uh, love to see some thoughts on that uh, down in the comments below. So please give us some insight. DOP, certainly nothing yeah, I've ever invoiced for. Yeah, the, these DOP tests, testing the efficacy of filters and HEPA machines and whatnot, you know, now we have some kind of fee related to those charges. Uh, so nice to see that as well. Notice the dot zero zero. Dot zero zero, right? It's yep. going to be settling over time. It's a well. settling line item. Uh, and then lastly, our fun new line items of the month. Oh, we yeah. Cleaning umbrella stands. What up? Get those stands, put them in your houses, let them burn up, and then somebody's going to clean them. Uh, yeah, so we got some new clean umbrella strands line item. That is the 18 new line items for May of 2020. Uh, let's jump here to the eService Center link to highlight, you know, new personal properties. So last month we joked that Ted Nugent had a fire. Yeah. He did all of his archery and related extreme sports equipment covered. Now we've got some golf head covers here mm -hmm. uh, as new personal property line items. Uh, so yeah, go, we talk about sheathing all the time, but we didn't talk about sheathing golf clubs. So now you can, and you can get reimbursed, uh, for them in that process. Let's take a look at some of the modifications here. I'm going to bring up a new room here for line item changes, move made on my right side here and bring up April again on the left, April versus May line item changes so that we can take a look at some of these. I'm going to bring up the e-service center link. Uh, and start with this right here, HMR, HEPA F, HMR, HEPA W, WTRH, and whatnot. We spoke briefly about these line items last month in April because they made some changes to yield. And if you want to get really nerdy with me for a moment, I've got March on the left, April in the middle, and May on the right. 
And the first four line items are the same for each, each one. You see HEPA, uh, HMR, HMR, WTR, WTR, HEPA F, HEPA W, HEPA F, HEPA W. So in March to April, we talked about that they changed the yield such that it, uh, they changed the yield such that the pricing for these floor related line item uh, went from, you know, in San Diego, 85 cents to 87 cents. Good material, then but from, interesting change. Yeah. And then from April to May, it went from 87 to 87 cents to $1.62. Similar along this way, actually in, in the walls for HMR HEPA W in March, it was 61 cents. Then in uh, April, it was 50 cents. They moved it down. So actually yield increased and price went down. Then from April to May, it went from 50 cents to 97 cents. So what do you think is happening here as yields and these four line items that are related uh, from March to April, some uh, yields went up and down. And then from April to May, it looks like all of their yields went down such that the price increased on all of these line items. Uh, my first inclination is in the last three minutes, you and I have talked more about price than we have in the last three years combined. So it's not something Fair. that we typically dissect. And so Fair. I, let me, let me clarify it. It. I don't want to like comment on the price. Go ahead and clarify. Yeah, what they are making changes to, as you can see here in the actual thing, is modified labor component yield. So they're not actually manipulating prices anyway, but they're doing tests or fields or getting research back from the field as to how productive are workers doing this, this stuff. That is productivity, a.k.a. yield. And yeah. understandably, when something is more difficult to do and yield decreases because it's less productive, then the price increases. We've talked about that inverse relationship between price and yield. Something gets easier to do, yield goes up, then the price goes down. If the yield goes down, it's harder to do, the price goes up. So thank you for allowing me the opportunity to clarify. The prices themselves aren't changing, but the yields are changing, which is affecting the resulting price. Yeah, so the only thing that would be doing that you know, that drastically is if they had commissioned some large scale on site survey where they're sending out very risk employees to like audit productivity. So good for them. They're investing in the accuracy of their price list. And so some things are going up and some things are going down and HEPA vacuuming has been hotly contested for as long as I've been in this business. So I, I think it's, it warrants some additional attention to ensure accuracy and it's a commonly used line item. So it makes sense uh, and good for them. Now we have, uh, Four more line items here, similar from April to May. These are the dry ice and soda blasting line items specifically for floors. No walls related line items. A lot of these were added. Uh, if you go back to the new April line items room, you'll see uh, these uh, HMR, SPIF, HMR, uh, you know, these same line items were just added in April. Yep. And so then in May, they've made some yield adjustments such that when you look at it, it looks like that the yield was increased slightly on all of these line items that resulted in a slight decrease uh, in the price for all the floor related activities when it comes to dry ice blasting exposed framing, soda blasting exposed framing and the HMRW. These are the ones that need a sheathing line item. They just yes. need to be flanked by a WTR and then an HMR sheathing and then they've solved that problem that's plagued us for over a decade, so. Yep. Some yield changes there. Uh, another unique yield change here, bringing up the uh, line item here, you'll see the RFG, uh, where was the RFG SNBR, Modified Labor Components of Yields and Assemblies. So we have here the Snowbar Galvanized Powder Coated. Uh, looks like the yield was increased such that the price decreased from April to March. And then lastly, one of the big ones, Watley, that I, I want us to take a moment to look at. Uh, they changed, quote unquote, here, I'll read this specifically. L-A-B-S-U-P-E-R, uh, put star because it means multiple line items are affected. So this is both the residential supervision line item and the commercial supervision line item. They added a text to the note field to help clarify the intent of the supervision line item. Now, you and I have been flying around the country for years, training Xactimate, Matterport, other related things. And one of the hottest topics everywhere we go is supervision. So uh, first off, I can bring up, uh, I'll bring, uh, sorry, this is April here. I'll bring May here. And we could look at these two here back and forth. But in preparation for this video, I actually added 
uh, both of these to a Word document uh, that I want to bring up here. So you'll see here in April 2020 on the top, we have the additional item information note for L-A-V-S-U-P-E-R-R. -R. This is residential supervision. And then in, down here is May. And the major text change that you'll see has been highlighted here in black and yellow and et cetera, so that we can highlight it. Um, just to briefly kind of give you a summary overview, the beginning hasn't changed much and where it ends at the, this item is not intended to be used for working crew leader. It changes after that. It used to say full-time supervision project managing may be typical on larger projects, smaller jobs may warrant project managers on an as needed basis. Now you have the GC estimator and or parties involved will determine whether or not the use of a formal superintendent or project manager is warranted, as well as the number of hours required to perform these tasks. A supervisor, superintendent slash project manager generally manages multiple jobs at once. And generally, a typical single family detached rebuild or new build would have a minimal amount of hours per weekday. Uh, in some cases, such as large uh, projects, a full-time formal supervisor may be warranted. So what are your thoughts on kind of this text change and how this supervision line item is meant to be applied in property insurance claims? I think this line item is hotly contested. It's gotta be like the top five. I think everything I say next is gonna be met with great scrutiny from both sides of the claim. Fire, okay, so uh, against you guys some insight into what Actionable has been training to informed by the Insight Sheet database and our private training is, you know, if you feel that project management is warranted and you're actually performing that function and you're deploying a specialized asset to function in that role, um, then often two hours a day, you know, is something if broken out thoughtfully in the calculation that carriers will find palatable. You know, for if you're example, for example, five days a week times two hours a day times a four week project. Yeah, and that that's because at the core of it, you know, we knew that a lot of these supers they're gonna be managing more than one project at a time. Now if you have a dedicated commercial project and it's north of a quarter million dollars, you're gonna have a dedicated resource on that. So that would be where it makes sense. And they still provide some space for that in the language to bill for that on a full-time basis. But what I believe the pricing department is trying to say is like your normal $66,000 repair uh, invoice that has seven different trades involved, you know, hey, we'll give you some relief for the project management superintendent, okay? And that, and that exists, notice there's no mention to overhead and profit, right? That's the thing that gets so conflated because the, the which it didn't, and it, it really has to, but it's so confusing, the white paper, because it does say that like, overhead and profit or, or project management is rolled into the line items, right? And if you look at that in a vacuum and you don't read further, the next line, it says that it's adequate, you know, project management uh, uh, for that individual trade. So if you hire a drywall, there's enough management hours in there for the trade to get executed under the direction of a GC. So this particular activity, this does smooth the way for, you know, that impasse not emerging. So, okay, clearly it's separate, but don't bill me as a carrier for eight hours a day, you know, for the eight weeks you're on site. And I think this is why we can't have nice things, you know, how many times did you and I hear from these contractors like, oh, like you can't get paid for project management. Well, why? Because you just stuck a bill in there for $16,000 of project management on your $60,000 repair bill with no explanation. And, and like, that's how we got here. So, you more know, the is trying to cut through this, right? Yeah, more commonly what we see is the calculation field of a supervision line item mm -hmm. will just be 160. Thanks. And as a claims adjuster, someone's trying to determine whether or not that's warranted, if you just put a number in the calc field, it's difficult for someone to look at that number and feel comfortable like as an adjuster. But when you break it down in the calc field, as we mentioned earlier, of two hours a day times five days a week times four overall weeks for this project, that comes out to 40 total hours. Therefore, I kind of understand how you got to 40 hours instead of just saying I need uh, one per It could be 40 hours to me historically means one person five days every day all day, every day. So right. breaking it down, you know, there is some new language here, providing space for those hourly supervision, a couple hours a day 
uh, to supervise these uh, smaller jobs in general, uh, especially at, when it comes to coordinating the work of subcontractors or performing other management duties. They, you know, they highlight what management duties are, are considered project management or superintendent down here as well. Uh, and the, the other, distinction there is they're saying that many of those activities, in fact, the majority of them are activities that happen outside of the property. This does not have to be on site uh, project management. So, you know, they're trying to strike a balance. I'd say the update, this language to paint with broad strokes is, you know, slightly more carrier centric, uh, but that's okay. Uh, at least there's some clarity here and it's, it's a really, really touchy situation uh, right now. And I think it will remain touchy as long as there's all that ambiguity about what does O and P actually include. I think the marketplace rightly, wrongly, not even nefariously is so confused about what overhead and profit is to include. And I, I'm not sure that it's anybody's fault, but time, because that notion is born out of the fifties and the sixties and the seventies. And, you know, when I got my license, they went all into overhead and profit and that should be set, uh, separate and distinct. And it's really trying to help contractors that often weren't, didn't necessarily have a bias towards administration, uh, be able to bid jobs successfully and ensure that they were maintaining, you know, some degree of profit and, and overhead, right. A, a profit first type model, but it just doesn't seem to apply any more to a restoration contractor, but nobody can get away from it. So we're just in this quagmire of what is open P actually include and exclude. And then how does that relate to supervisory hours? But I think if you read the white paper and you read that and you're intellectually honest about it, where you are, uh, wherever you sit in the claim, if you're looking at a claim and it's over 30 G's for repair straight away, there's clearly over three trades involved and some contractors billing you for a couple hours a day for project management. I, I think a reasonable individual would be able to, um, you know, extend some relief for that activity. And approve those hours in the bill. Yeah, that mm -hmm. makes sense. Makes a lot of sense. Um, that's a lot of the yield changes, additional item info changes. We do have uh, a rare deletion of line items from Xactimate. And so uh, I want to highlight here, when you look at the May 2020 update, it says that uh, it modified some existing laminate flooring line items, FCW LAM, LAM minus, LAM plus. Uh, and then down here, it says structural line items or priceless items deleted. And so you have some snap lock laminate simulated wood flooring line items that were generally deleted from the May 2020. And you and I could talk conjecture as to what was happening here, but they actually provided us an explanation down here that I want to briefly summarize, where it says Exactware Prices previously contained two line items for two specific types of laminate simulated wood flooring material, the FCW LAM series and the FCW LAMSL series of line items. Based on a review of these flooring materials, we made the decision to remove the LAMSL, the, the specifically the snap lock laminate floor material ones, and modify the existing LAM series of items to reflect the snap lock laminate simulated wood flooring material as the glued spline joint laminate flooring material has become non-existent over the years. So in summation for May 2020 and moving forward, there will only be one series of items in the price list for laminate flooring per square foot, and these will also represent snap lock laminate simulated wood flooring material. How'd I do? Excellent, buddy. I, I think I got to leave it there because I never, I got confused about when one would apply or the other. So I couldn't have been the only one. Uh, huge step in the right direction in order to constrain the arguments and, and swiftly, nobly, subtly claims. Hats off. I love it. The last thing I'd like to highlight here is some great work to update worker wage portions of the retail labor rates for various areas in the United States and Canada. This is an excellent reminder that Xactimate, Xactware's pricing department, put out another uh, platform vehicle for you to provide pricing feedback to them. We actually host it on our website at getinsights.org slash retail dash labor dash rates, uh, where there is a sheet here that I'll, I'll pull up at the bottom here. You can click this link under two, use the retail labor rates worksheet. And I will open up this specifically where you can provide some feedback pricing wise uh, on the retail labor rates that you charge your customers in your particular area, such that Xactimate can act on it. And you can see here in the May 2020, they're specifically calling out that they updated the worker page, uh, worker wage portion of retail labor rates based on the feedback that they're getting from this form. 
So certainly when Xactimate gives us a platform and a vehicle to communicate pricing feedback in our particular areas, it's something that we're always gonna recommend you guys use and endorse. Uh, and uh, I would highly recommend filling out this sheet and emailing it to pricing at exactware.com to give your regional feedback as to the retail labor rates because they are acting on it. And let's include a link to that on our website as well in the comments down below, because if you told me to go find that on our website, I don't think I could do it. So you, that's fair. So anyhow, we'll, we'll put that link out there for you guys. Let's, uh, let's knock this out. So anyhow, a lot of work went into this guys. I know that Harrison hustled for nearly a day to put this short, little concise breakdown together. So do them a solid, share this baby, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Uh, really share it. We're trying something new. If you share it and DJ Lipson catches it, uh, he might send you some socks if you're an active subscriber as a token of our appreciation. So anyhow, uh, comment below. I guess we need some clarification on what's going on with that, that DOP testing and inspection. So I'd love some insight. Uh, about how you guys are using that line item and if IHs are calling for it or if I'm wildly off base. So anyhow, thanks for tuning in guys. I think I'm yep. about it. Thank you very much. We will see you guys next month for June's updates. Thank you. All right. Be good.